Today, we're gonna to make a custom blog post template without Elementor Pro. Now I have covered this video before. In that previous video, we had made it using Elementor's sections and columns function. Things have changed and Elementor now uses the container widget. Like I said before, we are not using Elementor Pro here. We're simply using the free version of Elementor. The other plugin you're gonna need for this is Pro Elements. Now if you don't have Pro Elements installed, there's gonna be a link above and a link in the description of where you can get that. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this is going to be the template that we're going to be building. So over here you can see there's this background image. Now this background image is actually the featured image, just stylized as the background. So every time this post changes, the background is going to change as well. It's a really cool little feature. I'm going to show you how to do that. So if I scroll down and I choose a different post, you can see how the background actually changes to suit the post itself. Other thing we're going to be adding is going to be adding the heading. We're going to be adding the metadata the featured image over here, the main text, and then also we're gonna have a related article section, and over here you can see there's three different cards for different types of posts that the people can click on. Okay, something to note before we start building the template is please have a couple of example posts in your website already before building the template, even if it's just one post. So you're gonna need the title, you're gonna need the featured image, you're gonna need some sort of content, and a post exit would help as well. So having a couple of example posts will help you when you're building out the post template, because Elementor will pull data from one of your existing posts while you're building out the templates so it can help you show how exactly that post is going to look like. So having those example posts is going to help you tremendously while building a template. Okay, so here in the back end of our WordPress website, in order to start creating a custom post, what we're going to do is we're going to go into templates and we're going to go into a theme builder. So here in the theme builder, you have a whole bunch of different options of different templates you can make. So today we're going to be concentrating on making our own custom post. So to do that, we're going to hover over posts and you have the option of creating a new post from this plus sign over here or you can click this and a whole new window opens up. From here, if you have any existing templates, you can edit them from here. But in our case, we don't have any, so we're gonna create one. So to do that from here, we can click on this add new button on the top right. Okay, so now that the Elementor Builder has loaded up, you can see that the library window has popped up. Now this library is actually catered for Elementor Pro, so you're gonna need Elementor Pro to use any of these kits, but that's not a concern for us because we're gonna be creating our own custom post from scratch. So all we're going to do is we're going to close this window. So as you can see in my website, I have this footer over here. You obviously won't have this in your website, so you don't have to worry that this looks different. The area we're going to be concentrating on is this area over here. This is where we're going to build a custom post. So the first thing we're going to need is the main container that's going to house the entire template. So to do that, we're going to click on this plus sign. I'm going to select this first container over here. Now that we have our first container here, you're going to see all the settings on the left-hand side. If you don't see these settings over here, then all you have to do is click on the six-dot icon of this container, and then the settings will definitely appear here on the left. Now the content width I'm going to keep the same, and generally most of the stuff I am going to be keeping the same here in these settings. The only thing I'm going to be changing in this window is if I go into additional options, the overflow I want hidden. So nothing spills over from this container anywhere else into the page. Then I'm going to head over to style, then under style, I'm going to change the background type to a classic. I'm going to make the color a black. I'm not going to add a background image here under the background image because I want to stylize it and I can only stylize it if it's an overlay. So I'm going to keep the color black because when I fade out that image just a little bit, when I blur it, the back background underneath is going to help make the writing on top stand out better. So now let's go over to background overlay and then I'm going to choose a type as a classic. And over here, I'm going to add the image. Now, I'm not going to click on this. What I'm looking for is this icon over here. This is dynamic tags. I'm going to click on that. And you can see a whole new window pop up. And what we're looking for is the featured image. So now you can see there's a featured image in the background there, and it's quite dark, but we'll fix all of that now. So the next thing I'm going to do is going to make the position center. The attachment, I want fixed. Repeat, I want no repeat. And display size, I want it to cover. The opacity, I'm going to put to a 0.7. And then under CSS filters, I'm going to click on this pencil icon, and then this window pops up. Now the blur, I'm going to crank this up all the way up to 10, and I'm going to leave everything else as is. You do have the option of making this black and white to change the hue or anything else like that, but I'm only looking for that blur feature over here. This is what we can't do to the image under the background tab. It's all these CSS filters. It's only available to the background overlay. So now that I have the blur, I'm going to get out of this window. And I'm pretty much happy of how this container is looking. So now you can actually see that the background is actually a little bit on the dark side. And that's because of the original background here is set to black. So if I had to set this to white, you can see how it actually lightens it up. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to add now is a spacer to move everything else away from the top of the page. So I'm going to click on this nine dot icon. I'm going to scroll down to basic. I'm going to find the spacer widget. I'm going to click and drag that across until it's in the right place. I'm going to let go. This spacing over here, I'm going to give it a spacing of 150 pixels. 
I'm going to right click on the spacer. I'm going to say duplicate. The second one, I'm not going to have it as wide. I'm going to make it as a 50 pixels. Now that I have the two spaces, it's time to add the post title in between them. So I'm going to click on this nine dot icon. I'm going to look for post title. I'm going to click and drag that widget until it's in the middle of the two spaces and I'm going to let go. Now that we have the post title over here, I'm not going to change any settings over here in this window of content. I am going to be going directly into style just to stylize this the way that I want. So here, if I click on style, I'm going to change the alignment to center. The text color I'm happy with white because it offsets from the dark background. The typography, I'm going to make this smaller. I'm going to give this a 25 pixels. And then the last thing I'm going to do over here is under transform, I'm going to say this is uppercase. And the final thing I'm going to do to this title styling is under text shadow, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to make the shadow a 0.4. And then under blur, I'm going to put this as a three pixels. So what that's doing is this is making sure that the text stands out from the background. And there we go, our title's all stylized. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the post meta. Now that's going to be like the post info widget. So to get that, we're going to click on this nine dot icon. I'm going to look for the post info widget. I'm going to click and drag that until it's underneath the title and I'm going to let go. Here in the settings of the post info widget, you can see that there's an author, date, time, and comments. Now, personally for me, I don't want time and comments. I just want the author and date. So I'm going to remove these two. If you want to add any for whatever reason, all you have to do is click on add item. And under type, you can see there's a whole bunch of different things that you can add to the strip. But again, for me, I only want those first two. So I'm going to get rid of this. The last thing I need to do is I'm just going to head over to style. And I'm going to center line this underneath the title. Now, I don't have to change the color or sizing or anything else like that. I'm quite happy with how it's looking over here. If you need to change them, it's going to be here under style. And here you can change the icon size and coloring in that. And under the text, you can also do the same thing there. You can modify it how you like. Okay, so now that we have that out the way, what we're going to add next is a container. So I'm going to click on the nine dot icon. I'm going to look for the container. I'm going to click and drag that until it's underneath the bottom spacer. And I'm going to let go. So what I'm going to do with this container is I'm going to give it a background color in that. I'm going to offset it off the page. So it can really stand out so the person can read it quite easily. So I'm going to go to style and under background type, I'm going to say it's a classic. I'm going to say this is white. And then I'm going to go down to border because I want to give it a more rounded edge and a shadow. So to do that, under the border radius, I'm going to give this a 15 pixel. So you can see it rounds off the edges there a bit. And then under box shadow, I'm going to add one of these. I'm going to say the blur keeps it 10. And I'm actually quite happy with how it's looking at a 0.5 shadow. So the final thing I'm going to do to this container is I'm going to give a little bit of padding just to keep the text away from the edges. So I'm going to go under advanced and under padding, I'm going to give it a 40 pixel. So now you can see that there's a space over here that the text won't pass. And then I'm very happy with how this container is looking. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over this icon here for the container. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say duplicate. So the first container is going to house the actual text content. And the second container here is going to be the one for the related posts. So in order to keep the design consistent, that's why I duplicated this now because I'm going to be needing the exact type of container later. So now we're going to add the main content of this template. So we're going to click on the nine dot icon. I'm going to look for the featured image first. I'm going to click and drag that until it's in this first container and I'm going to let go. Now you can see here's the featured image. You do have the options under style to stylize it anywhere you like. But for me in this example, I'm quite happy with how it's looking. So then the final thing I'm going to add to this container is the text content. So I'm going to click on the nine dot icon. I'm going to look for post content. I'm going to click and drag this until it's underneath the featured image and I'm going to let go. So if I scroll down, you can see here's the content of the article. Okay, so that's everything we need for this first container. So now we can start scrolling down and stylize the rest of the page. So the next thing I'm going to be adding is actually a spacer over here between these two containers because they're very close to Together. So I'm going to click on a nine dot icon. I'm going to go to basic. I'm going to find a spacer. I'm going to click and drag that until it's in between these two different containers. I'm going to let go. Now that we have the spacer, now we can concentrate on the second container. So the first thing I'm going to add to this container is a title that says related articles. So I'm going to click on this nine dot icon on the top. I'm going to look for a heading. I'm going to click and drag this widget until it's in the second container. And I'm going to let go. Here in the settings of the title, I'm going to change the title text to related articles. There we go. So now we're going to go over to style. I'm going to keep this on the left. I am going to change the typography. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this pencil icon. I'm going to say that I want this as a 30. I'm going to keep the weight the same, the transform. I'm going to say uppercase. And that's everything I'm going to do to this title. Okay, so now underneath this title, what we're going to add is going to be the posts widget. And that's going to show all the different related posts to this article. So to do that, we're going to click on this nine dot icon and in the search widget field, I'm going to type out posts and here you can see the post widget. You do have the option of using the loop grid widget. We're not going to cover that in this tutorial because the loop grid is a little bit more advanced. So we're going to keep everything simple and the post widget is a very good widget anyway. So I'm going to click and drag this post widget until it's underneath this title and I'm going to let go. So here's the post widget in action. So here you can see the post widget over here. You can see it gives a whole bunch of different posts that are on your website. I don't want so many posts, I just want three, and I don't want the style, I'm going to change the style to a card. So to do that, under the skin in settings, I'm going to change this from classic to a card, 
And now you can see this is a better style to fit this design. So again, if you don't see the settings over here on the left, all you have to do is hover over this widget and you can click on the pencil icon and then the settings will definitely be here on the left hand side. The next thing I'm going to change over here is this post per page. I'm going to say three because I only want three. So now you can see the others are gone. And then I'm going to look down for post meta and I'm going to remove this from here. This is that bottom section here. I don't want any post meta for these. You can add any that you'd want, but for me in this design, I'm just going to remove all of them. I'm also going to be removing the badge and I'm going to remove the avatar as well. Now the avatar is this circle over here of the author. Under query here, you can actually add all the different categories that you want to display in this post template. So you have the option of excluding different categories if you want. Another thing you can do is actually put related articles of that same author so here under include by instead of term you'd say author then you can put in the author that you want only their post to be displayed in this template but in this design that i'm showing in this example i'm just going to remove all of this and then we're going to move on to stylizing this widget so to do that i'm going to click on style and I'm happy with all the row gaps that's over here. I am going to make the center aligned here within the cards. And then the next thing I'm going to concentrate on is the actual content because I'm happy with the widget and the card itself. So content is where I'm going to be heading up to next. The title for this is too big. I just want it a lot smaller because it's a small card. So I'm going to put this as a 20. And then under transform, I'm going to put this as uppercase. So now that I'm happy with the title, something that I'm seeing over here is that there's too much excerpt being displayed. I want this a lot smaller. So to do that, I'm going to head over back into content. And here under content, I'm going to go down to the exit. I'm going to change this exit length into 20. And I'm going to say to apply this to custom exits as well. So what a custom exit is, is on the right hand side, when you're creating a blog post, you'll see a little window that says custom exit. And that is what this is referring to. So now that I'm happy with how these cards are, the last thing we're going to do is add a spacer underneath this container. So to do that, I'm going to click on this nine dot icon. I'm going to scroll down to basic. I'm going to click and drag this spacer underneath this container and I'm going to let go. So for the settings of the spacer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to a hundred and I'm pretty much happy with how this is looking. So now if I scroll up, you can see everything that we've built for this template. So now let's just go into mobile viewer and just finalize all the corrections that we need to do there. So to do that, I'm going to hover over this responsive mode icon. I'm going to click that and now you can see this top menu up here. So what we're looking for is mobile. So I'm going to click on mobile and here you can see how this is going to look in mobile. So now you can see that titles and that is just a little bit too big. So I'm going to click on the main post title and under style, I'm going to go to typography. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So I'm going to make this at about a 25. I'm going to make the space above just a little bit smaller. So I think I'm going to put this as maybe a 120. Then I'm I'm going to click on this main container here i'm going to take away this padding and under advanced i'm going to change the padding to a 15 so it uses more space in the screen these related articles obviously this is way too big so i'm going to go to typography i'm going to click on the pencil icon i'm going to say this is about a 25 as well then the last thing i'm going to do to this title is i'm going to make this more center aligned for mobile you don't have to worry about these settings affecting the desktop version because this is strictly just for mobile and then the final thing i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this widget here i'm going to bring all the settings on the left hand side what I'm looking for here is I want to make this title a lot smaller. So to do that, I'm going to go to content. I'm going to look for the title and under typography, I'm going to make this about a 20. And then obviously I have to make this container more uniform to the top one. So I'm going to click on this icon here, bring up the settings, go to advanced and under padding, I'm going to say 15 here as well. And there we go. That's pretty much how attempt it's going to look on both desktop and mobile. Okay, so now it's going to go back into desktop mode. And the last thing that we have to do to make this go live is we're going to click on this publish button over here. And when you click on publish, this whole display conditions window pops up. This is where we're going to tell WordPress to only use this template for our posts. So to add a condition, we click on this button here. Now you can see it says include in all singular. Now we don't want all singular. What we want is just a blog post because you don't want this to affect any main pages of your website. I'm going to click on all singular. I'm going to look for posts and here it's going to be all posts. You do have the option to make different templates for different posts. So if you wanted to do that specifically, you click on all and you can type out the post name and you can find all the posts that you want this template to affect. But here in this example, we want it for all our blog posts. And then the last thing we have to click is this button over here that says save and close. And there we go. Our blog article has been successfully published into our website. So let's go preview this in a live website. And hopefully I get these two bugs that are actually kind of common in Elementor for some reason. But I'm hoping that the display here so I can show you how to fix them. So let's go preview this template. So to do that, I'm going to hover over the preview R icon. I'm going to click that. I'm going to say preview. And there we go. Here's our template in action. Now you can see mine is black and not displaying the featured image like we had stylized, which is one of the bugs that I was hoping would happen to me so I can show you in this video and how to fix it. 
But for now, you can see how this post is actually working. So if you can scroll down, you can see all these other related posts. So if I click on one of these, what's most likely going to happen because I have the first bug is going to be the second bug that triggers. Now the second bug is going to be the featured image and it's going to be tiled in some weird way. But again, I'm going to show you how to fix that, which is very easy. So I'm going to click on this post over here and now you can see that the post is being displayed. Now again, you can see that this background is exactly like I was going to say on the second bug. That it's actually displaying the background featured image like this and not the way we stylized it. So now let's go fix that completely. So on the top, you can see here's your website. If you hover over that, you can click on dashboard. So let's just go do that now. Or you can go to dashboard through a different window. It doesn't really matter. So in order to fix that bug, we go over to Elemental. We're going to go over to the tools. We're going to click on that. And the very two options over here, we're going to regenerate the files and data. And we're going to resync the library. So if you go look at our posts now, you'll see that they'll be displaying correctly. And there we go. You can see that the post is completely fixed and all the stylizing that we had done is now being displayed correctly. So if I go to a different post, you can see that now the featured image of that post is in the background and it's blurred out and everything's correct. So if you're ever having the problem, if you edit your template, just remember, go into the tools and just regenerate the files. Okay, now that is how to build a custom blog post without Elementor Pro. We don't have to use the free version of Elementor. But it was free. I hope you liked this video. If you have any suggestions or anything, then please leave a comment down below. Please remember to like and subscribe because that stuff helps my channel a lot. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.